Well, praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Let's get started this morning. Let me just get a lot of let get a lot of shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Well, we're going to get started this morning, amen. We are so grateful to be here this morning. We're going to just open up with a word of prayer. We're going to get right into praise and worship and just lift our voice before the Lord and thank him for all the wonderful things he has done, all the things he is doing today, amen. Amen. Let us bow our head. Heavenly Father, we come right now in the blessed name of Jesus. Father, we thank you so much that you've been such a good father to us. And we just lift our hearts to you today and says, thank you. Thank you for Jesus Christ, who is our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer, the one who shed his blood that we might have forgiveness of sin. We thank you, Father. And as we lift our voices today, may you receive our praise as we worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you, for Father, for just your presence being here today. Bless those, O oh God, who walks through the door today, that they might be touched by your presence and that you might do things in their lives that they are looking forward for you to do, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Let all the saints say, Amen. Amen. All right, let's worship the Lord this morning. search the world but it couldn't fill me man's empty praise and treasures it fade are never enough then you came along you put me back together 
Thank you, Father. Oh, we come before you, Lord, and we give you praise and honor and glory, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you for running after us, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your mercy, Lord God. Lord, we want to be, uh, we want to be honorable in your eyesight, Lord Jesus. We want to do what you want us to do, Lord God. We surrender all, Lord. We put it all before your feet, Lord Jesus. We cast all our cares before you, Lord God. Strengthen us, Lord God. Guide us and lead us, Lord God, as we serve you. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Wow. Wonderful praise and worship. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. At this time, we'll greet each other. If you will, just go around and greet each other, shake hands, uh, uh, bump, or uh, whatever you want to do. Thank you. Praise the name of Jesus. Welcome. Welcome those that's, welcome Go Church and those that's joining us on YouTube, live streaming, Instagram, and Facebook. We like to say welcome, welcome, welcome. And please subscribe, hit the like button, please, so you can tune in every Sunday morning. Amen, amen. At this time, if we have any visitors, I would like to say welcome, welcome, and welcome. And please come back again. And if you will, we have a small gift uh, that the Ursha will hand you after service. And uh, please do not forget that before you leave out the door. And uh, we have a special, we have some special guests this morning. Pastor Edgar family is here, mother and father, brother, sister and Lord. They are all here this morning. Give them a hand clap. Amen, amen, amen. Yes, sit back and enjoy the word. Pastor Edgar always brings us a word from the Lord, and it's always good in his own time. 
And praise the Lord for that. We thank God for Pastor Edgar. Amen. And his wife, Bianca, and, his, and their little girl. Amen. Uh, as you know, we have ch we collect change for mission here at this church every Sunday morning, if you will. If you have any dimes, uh, pennies, nickels, quarters, or whatever you want to put, we have a flower box on that table over there on my right and to your left. And if you would, drop a few pennies in that, and as we collect it, we'll distribute it to Belize or Turkey or whoever's in need of that uh, monies at this time, and we'll contribute it to them, all right? Amen, amen. Uh, did I miss something? I was trying to see. There's something I'm missing, but we'll go on. And uh, T-shirts. Yeah, T-shirts. We have new T-shirts out. Amen. This year we have a different uh, logo on it. And if you will, please purchase T-shirts. And the T-shirts are $12. We're also selling coffee mugs. And if you want a coffee mug, that'd be $10. And you can go online and do that if you would like. And if not, you can get with uh, Pastor Edgar or uh, Bianca and give them your size and color and your monies. And they will order you the T-shirts, all right? We already had one person this morning, first thing. I want a T-shirt. So she paid up front, thank the Lord, and she will get her T-shirt. Amen? Amen. Oh, remember... Tonight is party night. We're going to have a party there at Katie Church. It's a cluster party, and it's going to start at 6 o'clock, and it's going to be a, 50, a 50th theme, 50th theme, 50th theme. And if you were dressed in your 50th attire, we're going to have fun. We're going to have food. We're going to have games, and we will have prizes. And we are always looking for the best dress. So I heard one of our sisters here, Shammy, she's going to be dressed up. So we're going to be looking at you, Shammy. We'll be voting for you. <laughs> Amen. Grow Team. Our Grow Team is about to start back up. It's going to be on August the 31st. First at 6.30 at this church, Tumball Campus. And if you will please join us, we'll, it'll be on August the 31st, okay? For those who have uh, been, they know here at this church. Baptism. Baptism, baptism is uh, uh, September the 4th at 5 o'clock. And it have a QR code up there if you want to scan it. And you can register for it to be baptized. And if you don't want to do it that way, please get with Pastor Edgar and let him know. And he'll put you on the list to be baptized for that particular day, September the 4th at 5 o'clock. Thank you. Advance. We will have an advanced class coming up. And it's going to be on September the 10th. September the 10th, and it's $20, and please sign up for that. And we would like to have the Tomball campus represented there at the Katy Church. That's where it would be, right, at the Katy Church, the advance. And so uh, please sign up for that. Uh, use the QR code. If not, get with Pastor Edgar, and he'll fill you in, and you can sign up with him, all right? Go in the flow. And that's going to be a night on August the 31st, a night of worship and teaching about the flow of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that wonderful? And so we want, that's going to be also at the Katy Church. And we ask that everyone would uh, attend that. That's to go in the flow. All right? Amen. Well, I have some encouraging words for you as every Sunday I try to give you a word that I believe that the Lord has given me to give out. And the word for today is, it says, the word says, we are the salt of the world. Through our actions to others, we bring glory and honor to God. But remember, sprinkle a little salt through making a difference in someone's life. All right? Amen. At this time, I'm going down to the tithes and offering, and we have a basket passed around by our usher. And if you need an envelope, please raise your hand. And on the envelope, please put your name on the outside and the amount that you're giving, if you will, do that for me. And uh, you know we have four ways of giving at this church. We do it in person with the envelopes. And we go online at gochurch.org slash give, or we can text it in at 8432. 
or we can do it by mail. And if we do it by mail to Gold Church, P.O. Box 1261, Katy, Texas, 77492. And if you do it that way, if you send it in a money order or check, please put down the Tumball campus since we do have two campuses. We have Katy and here in Tumball. And it will be credited to this uh, particular church. And I want to thank you. And we'll bring up Pastor Edgar at this time. Give him a hand clap. Thank you. Amen, amen. Good morning, family. Y'all seem a little quiet today. I figured it would be a lively day because kids are going back to school. I thought parents would be like, I got my house back. I'm excited. <laughs> Man, we're super excited about what, what's happening here at Go. Um, this is our outreach season, right? Everyone say outreach season. Wow, that was terrible. Can we say outreach season one more time? Say outreach season. There we go. There we go. Maybe y'all are sad about kids going back to school. It seems like, I don't know. Um, but again, we're in the middle of our home um, initiative. Uh, again, send me names of people who have not been plugged into a church for a while. You can scan the QR code, enter their information. I'll be giving you a call to try to partner together, try to get people back in the door, right? And so again, if they are active in a church, praise the Lord. We celebrate that. We're not interested in them. We're, that's great. Um, but if they haven't been attending anywhere, whether they were attending Go or another church, send us their name. We want to partner again with you. It's not just going to be us doing the work. We're doing this together, right? Everyone say, doing this together. We're doing it together. Um, and so we'll reach out to you about partnering together to try to get them in the door. And so our goal is to average two more. Um, in August than we did in July. Um, we're off to a great start already. Um, and so if we meet our goal on September 4th, everyone say September 4th. September 4th. What happens on September 4th? Tacos. tacos. Shami is excited about tacos. She said that so quickly. <laughs> September 4th, we get breakfast tacos, right, if we hit that goal. Um, and then the following month, if we hit it again, then we'll get iced coffee and it'll be just a great time. Um, and so really excited about what's going on here. And so like we talked about last week, Katie's already talking about a second service. And so Get ready, because that's going to be us pretty soon as well, right? And so I'm um, really excited for that. And so we'll watch what goes right and wrong for them, and then we'll get to learn from there. So <laughs> head start. Um, and so uh, today, the title of the message today is, said, is called Salt. Everyone say Salt. Salt. So, so uh, a few months ago, I, wa or I saw a clip of the show The Chosen. Anybody ever seen the show The Chosen? Uh, a couple people? No? Okay. All right, cool. Um, so it was, it was a clip about Jesus preparing to preach the Sermon on the Mount. Right. And so um, I just I felt like, man, we need, we need to talk about that this morning. We, I want to preach on that this morning. And so this is the precursor message to a six sermon series we are calling the Go series, the Go series. I'm sure you're like, why are we doing so many series? Like it's because it's outreach season. Right. We're trying to get somewhere. And so the Go series connects with our home initiative. And that's all just going to be leading up to BOG Sunday. Right. Uh, can it, what does BOG mean? Be our guest. All right, y'all are listening. Let's go. Or you already knew that. And so either way, um, it's good. So BOG is a Sunday where we partner together to, to bring an unreached person to church with us, right? And so um, BOG, Be Our Guest, we usually play that clip from, uh, what's that movie? Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, the Be Our Guest. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you got it stuck in your head now. So that's great. Um, but all these things are leading up to BOG Sunday where each and every person that steps foot in this place should bring somebody with them, right? And so if we all bring somebody, just simple math, we double, right? And so that's, that's the goal, that's the aim. Um, and so if you would this morning, turning your Bible to Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, we're going to dive into salt this morning. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. And as you're turning there, I want to give you a little bit of background about what's happening in this verse. Um, Jesus has just been baptized by John the Baptist, right? And so um, he was tempted by the, by the devil in the wilderness, right? We, we all know that, that, that passage. Um, and this is early on in Jesus' earthly ministry. He came to this mountainside not far from Capernaum, right? And, and, and I know several people who have been to this hill that, that is referenced here. Um, but they say, I've heard said that you can literally speak with a regular tone and just be heard by thousands. Like your voice just carries, Right, and, 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 and it carries through the hills. And this is the background, the setting for where Jesus preached this message, the Sermon on the Mount. Right, and this, uh, it, the Sermon on the Mount encapsulates Jesus' message to mankind. Right, it was Jesus' longest sermon. It's found in Matthew uh, chapters 5 through 7. And most of Jesus' well-known teachings are found here. Right, the Beatitudes, the Lord's Prayer, 
the, the basis of discipleship, a lot of Christian values, and a lot of other things, right, are found within this sermon. Towards the beginning of it, right after the Beatitudes, we find our focus verse for, t- for today, right? Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. We're going to go ahead and read it this morning. It says, verse 13, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. But that verse is talking about you. It's talking about me. He calls us salt. He calls us salt. In modern days, to call somebody salty means that they're bitter. It means that they're upset or angry, right? So if somebody ever tells you you look salty, just be insulted immediately. It's not a good thing. <laughs> it means you look angry, right? So, so was Jesus telling us that we are angry? No, right? It's, it's, it was a different cultural context back then. What did, what did he mean by calling us salt? It's not about us being angry. It's about us being Salt, and we're going to dive into what that means today, right? And you think of salt, you close your eyes, you think just a salt shaker on your dining table or the restaurant that you're about to go eat at here in a little bit. But why did he call us salt? Why is it so important? What does that mean for us as believers, as lovers of Jesus? What does that mean? So this morning, we're going to take it back to the cultural times of then, what was happening then, what salt was used for then, and what that means for us here today. Amen? Y'all with me this morning? Amen. All right, so the first, salt preserves meat. The first use of salt back then was that it preserved meat. All right, so salt slays, slows the, slays, salt slows the decaying process. It slows it down, right? We think of beef jerky or smoked salmon. Um, These are two examples that this particular process has been used on for years, using salt to stop that decaying process. So what does that mean for us, right? What if Jesus here was saying, I want to slow the decay of the world. I want to slow the spiritual decay that is brought on by everyday life, that is brought on by attacks from the enemy. I want to use you to slow that down. What if Jesus is saying, I want my followers to hold back the evil of this world. Right, verse 13 that we just read goes hand in hand with verse 14. And that verse says, you are the light of the world. That is so true. We are called to stand out. We're called to be different in this world. Right? I read a story about the Welch revival and about how all of the bars in this city had to be shut down because nobody was going to them anymore. Could we carry that type of difference on the inside of us, right? Pastor Lee um, talks about this. He's pastoring in Ohio nearly 30 years ago, and, and there was this woman whose husband had just ended her life. He was sitting in front of her just trying to counsel her, and her, her, her kid was in juvenile detention. Her, her house was just in terrible shape, like literally just falling on her. And he recalls she was slouching in the seat. She was just kind of carefree, just slouched and smoking a cigarette. And he asked her, man, why do you, why do you live like this? What, you know, what's, what's, what's going on? Why? She thought for a second. She kind of chuckled. She said, I just like to party. I just like to party. Her rebellion against God was destroying her life. And as, as we, we look at the contents of her life, we can see that spiritually she was decayed. She was run down spiritually. And it caused people around her to be the same as well. We are called as as lovers of Jesus, as believers, to preserve, to hold back the darkness, to be vessels of God's light to the world that is around us. Here uh, on on the screens, you'll see um, the story of two family trees that lived in the 18th century. Right, so we have two men here. One is named Max, Max Jukes. The other is Jonathan Edwards. You may be familiar with who he is. Um, but here we see some differences in their lives, right? Max Jukes was not religious. Jonathan Edwards was, was a Christian. He was a preacher. Max Jukes was married to an ungodly wife. Jonathan Edwards was married to a godly woman. When they counted their descendants, Max Jukes had 1,200. Jonathan Edwards had 1,400. 
And, and this, here's where we see the discrepancy between their two lives, between these two families, right? So the descendants of Max Jukes, 310 of them died as paupers, 130 were criminals, seven were murderers, and 50 were openly immoral women. The descendants of Jonathan Edwards, we see something vastly different, right? We see 13 college presidents, we see 100 college professors, three U.S. senators, a vice president, three judges, 100 lawyers and 60 doctors, 75 army and navy officers, 100 preachers and missionaries, 60 authors and editors, and 80 public officials. These families, ultimately, their cost to the state, the Jukes family, was $1.25 million. And the Edwards family cost the state nothing. Cost the state nothing. Can I remind us this morning that true lovers of Jesus, their lives don't look the same as the world. Can I remind us this morning that our habits, our entertainment, our attitudes, the jokes that we make don't look like the world that is around us. Can I remind us that lovers of Jesus, their lives are to be transformed, to be growing in the likeness of Jesus. 100% they're not perfect. I'm not telling you this morning that you have to walk out of here and be perfect or pretend like you are. Because we're all on the journey, right? We are allowing the Holy Spirit to transform us. Don't you just love like meeting people and you just know that they love Jesus? Like you can just tell, like just one conversation, you're like, man, I want to love Jesus like that person. I just, I, I love interacting with people like that. I love meeting people like that because you know that their lives have been transformed. You know that Jesus has done something on the inside of them. So for us, right, salt slows the decaying process. And in case you ha- don't know already, or maybe you've been living under a rock for the past couple of years, the morals of this world are decaying at an unreal rate. Can I remind us this morning that the church is called to be that light on a hill? Can I remind us that we are to be hospitals for the hurting and for the broken? And our cure is not about laws or rules or religion. It's about allowing the Holy Spirit to mold us, to redeem us, to change us from the inside out. We're called to be light. We're called to look different. We're called to live different. And we're called to hold back the darkness, to preserve. Salt preserves. The second use of salt back in that culture was salt enhanced the flavor of things, right? I guess that kind of carries over to today as well, right? I guess both of these. But Jesus wanted his followers to partner with him to enhance the world around us, to renew the world around us, to enrich the world around us. I don't know, I mean, I'm sure you guys know this, right? We have the greatest news in all of the world. Look at your neighbor and say, I have the greatest news in the world. We carry this, this love of Jesus, right? What he did for us on the cross. And if we look at the life of Jesus, his message was radical to the hearer in 30 AD. It was radical. It didn't make sense. And I would venture as far as to say that Jesus' message is radical for us to hear even today, right? Let's look at Luke chapter 6, verse, verse 35. It says, But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. Why? Because He is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. It just doesn't make sense. And, and, and the world looks at us, looks at our beliefs, looks at what we stand for as some kind of pariah, as some kind of outside thing, just doesn't make sense. Our message, what we carry is viewed as hateful. But the message of Jesus is a love that says, love your neighbor as you love yourself, right? That doesn't mean to, to be like your neighbor or, or, or love and embrace the sin of your neighbor, but it does mean to love them. We're called by God to love beyond ourselves, beyond our selfish motives, beyond any potential return of the kindness that we're giving out. I once heard a story of an atheist who was having a conversation with a believer. He was, the atheist was posing that you don't need to be a Christian in order to serve others. The Christian man turns and said, man, you're right. You do. You're right. 
But I challenge you to show me a homeless shelter that is run by an atheist. The atheist kind of became quiet. He thought for a moment and then just kind of went away silently. Not that there's not an atheist out there that doesn't love somebody or serve someone else, but hospitals, homeless shelters, schools, and orphanages around the world historically have been started by believers with a passion to live out the message of Jesus. The ways of Jesus are such a huge contrast to the ways of the world. We represent goodness and honesty. We represent loving our enemy, healing the hurting. We enhance the world. We flavor the world with the goodness of God, right? We are to be the light of the world. Right, so we see that salt preserves. We see that salt enhances. Number three, we see that salt was mixed with with honey and rubbed on the skin for uh, medicinal purposes. The latter part of Colossians chapter 1 verse 27 says, Christ is in you, the hope of glory. Can I remind us this morning that we are vessels of hope and we are vessels of healing as well, right? If you're a believer in Jesus, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. And in you is the hope of heaven. We, the vessels of Jesus, offer healing to the hurting. Not because of anything special about us, but because of who lives on the inside of us, right? Jesus heals. We are the vessels. God uses us to heal our community. God uses us to heal our families, the people around us. God uses us to be the vessels to heal broken homes, to heal racial divides, to disciple men and women to have Christ formed on the inside of them as well. Can I remind us this morning that we carry the medicine to the world, not only for this life, not only for things that they might need in this present life, but what they'll need in eternity. Jesus wants to partner with us to bring healing to the world around us. Are you available this morning? Fourth use of salt. Salt was was a commodity. Salt was, was valuable. Salt was valuable. Did you know this morning that the word salary comes from the word salt? Interesting. Right? There is some conversation about how widespread this was, but during Roman times, the soldiers would often be paid in salt. Imagine walking in when your paycheck's due and they just hand you a bag of salt. What? (laughs) Why? Right? So, why were they paid in salt? Roman coins around that time were worthless in the countries that they were still trying to conquer. Right? So they would conquer a country and their money wasn't worth anything yet. So salt was used as a monetary system. Salt preserved meat like we talked about and allowed these soldiers to survive. That's why they were paid in salt. Another reason was that salt was a valuable commodity in ancient times. Nations literally went to war over salt. It's crazy. That thing that's just sitting on your kitchen table, people died for that thing. Have you ever heard the expression, he is worth his salt or he isn't worth his salt? Right, that, was, that was originated back then, meaning that somebody was either worth or not worth their wages that they were being paid. Salt was valuable. And if that verse is to be believed, and if we see that we are being called salt, in turn, can I tell you this morning that you are valuable? Can I tell you this morning that the Lord views you as valuable? My Bible tells me that you are so valuable that Jesus would leave the 99 to go just after you. You are so valuable that our Father God would wait for you at the edge of the field, longing for you to come home. And when you come home, there's not anger. There's not, he's not upset at you. When you come home, he will kill the fatted calf. He will place a ring on your finger and he will celebrate that you are home. You are so valuable that the Bible says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are so valuable that Jesus says in John 3.16 that God the Father sent his son for you. You are so valuable that the the word calls you a king and a priest. You are so valuable to God because you are the light of the world. And Jesus lives on the inside of you and ministers through you to touch the world around you. 
Meaning that God chooses to flow through you to touch this world for Jesus. Notice that that, that, that passage in Matthew, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, it doesn't say pastors are the salt of the world or apostles are the salt of the world or prophets are the salt of the world or teachers or preachers. It doesn't say any of that. What does it, what does it say? It says you are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. The role that you play in this kingdom is a role that nobody else can play. You are valuable. You are valuable to impact your family for Jesus. You are valuable to impact your neighbors and your community. You are valuable. You are worth your salt. Can I challenge us and encourage us this morning to be about our Father's business? Can we, can we be about kingdom business when we leave this place? Can we let our light so shine that people around us would glorify our Father in heaven? Can I remind us this morning that we are the salt of the earth? We are the salt of the earth. Can I have a stand to our feet this morning? Can everyone say, I am salt? If you're in this place and you're breathing, you are the vessel that God uses to preserve, that God uses to flavor, that God wants to use as medicine to this world, that God sees as valuable. We're called to preserve, to, to be light, to look different, to live different, and hold back darkness. We're called to flavor, to enhance the world, flavor the world with the goodness of God. Like Sister Deborah was saying, sprinkle in a little bit of salt everywhere that we go. We're called to be medicine. Jesus wants to partner with us to bring healing to the world around us. We are to remember that we're valuable. We are able to impact our family for Jesus, to impact our neighbors for Jesus. This is your reminder this morning that you are worth your salt. You are valuable. During this, this outreach season that we're in right now and we're going to continue to be in, God is moving us to touch Tomball, to touch the communities that we live in. God is calling us to preserve, enhance, and heal. This is a reminder for everyone in this place this morning that you are valuable to God to fulfill his purpose. No more excuses this morning. God is calling us to move. Maybe you're tired of hearing the same theme in these messages over and over and over again. I'm sorry, but they're not going to stop. Because this is the direction the Lord is pushing us to right now. And this is going to take all of us. I can't go visit everybody on this list, right? This is going to take all of us. Partnering together to reach Tomball for Jesus. To reach Humble for Jesus. To reach Cyprus for Jesus. If I miss somebody, fill in the blank where you live. For Jesus. using what we have, we're using our voices, we're using what's at our disposal, right? So again, if, if you know somebody that you desire for us to reach out to, man, send us their name through this QR code. Bring them to church as we start our ghost series in the next few weeks. Bring them to BOG Sunday. So this morning, I want to pose a challenge to each of us in this room. Will you partner with us to reach our community? Can we do this together? Maybe you're in this place and 
And as we were talking about salt and who we are and what, how the Lord sees us, you're like, man, I just don't feel those things. Maybe you're in this place, you feel inadequate. You feel like you're not able to reach the people around you. You feel uh, too comfortable in your comfort zone. Can I challenge you this morning to come? Perhaps you're in this place and you need another form of ministry. You just, you have a physical need or, or emotional or spiritual need in the place, man. Could you come? We want to pray for you this morning.